Thank you so, thank you so much, Madam Speaker. Um, I am pleased to speak on behalf of uh, my residents, of the residents of my riding of Davenport. I'm honored and blessed to represent in this uh, venerable house uh, on C, uh, on Bill C-14. I will be speaking on uh, specifically on some of the important measures that are included in Bill C-14, uh, which is called the an act to implement certain provisions of the economic statement tabled in Parliament on November 30th, 2020, and other measures. Since the onset of COVID-19, uh, the Government of Canada has remained steadfast in its commitment to do whatever it takes to protect the health and safety of Canadians and to help Canadian businesses weather the storm. The recently tabled fall economic statement outlines the government's actions to date and proposed new measures to support Canadians through the COVID-19 pandemic. These investments are a down payment on a growth plan of, of roughly up to 3 to 4% of GDP or between 70 to $100 billion over three years to jumpstart Canada's economy once the virus is under control. C-14 is an important step in the government's plan. It urgently moves forward with measures from the fall economic statement that would provide immediate assistance to families with young children, students, and businesses, and measures that will help protect the health and safety of Canadians. For example, the bill will ensure that Canadians whose Canada Emergency Response Benefit claim has been delayed can receive the income support that they are eligible for after the end of this year. This bill would also amend the Food and Drugs Act to help prevent and alleviate future drug shortages by allowing the government to make regulations to require pertinent information on potential shortages and activities related to food, drugs, and other items be provided to the Minister of Health when necessary. Madam Speaker, the fall economic statement also moves forward with a plan to set new national standards for long-term care in recognition of the tragic deaths from COVID-19 that we saw in the spring. And I would also say in the fall and uh, ongoing right now, it seeks to establish a 1 billion safe long-term care fund that will help provinces and territories protect seniors and our most vulnerable. In particular, Bill C-14 would provide funding of up to 505.7 million over the coming months to support long-term care facilities, including funding to prevent the spread of COVID-19 infection, outbreaks, and deaths in supportive care facilities. Our federal government also recognizes that the emotional and mental health effects of the pandemic on Canadians will continue as we face a second wave and public health measures continue to be in place. Indeed, half of Canadians report that their mental health has worsened during COVID-19. Bill C-14 would provide funding to improve vital access to virtual care and mental health tools. This includes important measures, sorry, this includes important investments to bolster distress centers and to provide further support for the Wellness Together Canada portal, which connects Canadians to peer support workers, social workers, psychologists, and other professionals to help address mental health and substance use uh, issues. These investments will help ensure that Canadians have the mental health supports they need when they need it the most. In addition to the 505.7 million for long-term care, this bill would provide funding of up to 395.6 million to support a range of initiatives to help Canadians cope during the pandemic and to continue our fight against the virus including the following, mental health and substance use programming, innovative approaches to COVID-19 testing, virtual care and mental health tools, and medical research, treatments and therapeutics, vaccine funding and development, border and travel measures, and isolation sites. As the members of this house well know, the spring saw many challenges as everything shut down across the country to help reduce the spread of the virus. Suddenly, kids were out of school, daycares were closed, and many families with young children had to find temporary alternatives to their regular childcare arrangements. These challenges have often meant higher unanticipated costs for Canadians, for Canadian families with children. 
our federal government is committed to helping the many families who have been struggling with a wide range of expenses as a result, from providing care to buying tools for at-home learning like books and computers and often more costly temporary child care arrangements. That is why the, go the federal government is proposing through Bill C-14 to provide immediate relief for low and middle income families with young children who are entitled to the Canada Child Benefit or CCB. For these families, we are proposing to provide up to $1,200 in 2021 for each child under the age of six. This would represent an almost 20% increase over the existing maximum annual CCB payment and would have a meaningful impact on families in need of this support during the pandemic. This support would automatically be, del be delivered to families entitled to the CCB who have a net income at or below $120,000 through four tax-free payments of $300. Families entitled to the C CCB who have a net income above $120,000 would receive four tax-free payments of $150 for a total benefit of $600. The first of these payments would be made shortly after the passage of C-14, within a week or two as I understand, with sub subsequent payments occurring in April, July, and October of 2021. This temporary assistance would direct benefit, directly benefit about 1.6 families and about 2.1 million children during a period when families are still grappling with the financial impacts they are facing as a result of this pandemic. Madam Speaker, we must also recognize how young people continue to suffer from the economic impacts due to COVID-19. When the pandemic struck, many students had to leave school and internships and summer jobs became scarce as Canadians did the right thing and they stayed at home. The government is working to ensure that the pandemic does not derail their futures. We are determined to take a number of measures to help youth continue on their career, continue in their schools. In addition to proposed measures from the fall economic statement that would provide more opportunities for young people to gain work experience, our government is also proposing support to ease the financial burden on recent graduates. This important measure, which has received praise from the Canadian Alliance of Student Associations, would bring $329.4 million in relief to up to 1.4 million Canadians who are looking for work or otherwise in the early stages of their careers. It would also help graduates from low and middle income families who tend to have higher overall debt levels, as well as recent graduates with disabilities. Given that 37% of borrowers who identified as a person with disabilities participated in the repayment assistance plan of the Canada Student Loans Program in 2017-2018. So in conclusion, Madam Speaker, it is clear that Canadians need our support to weather the storm as we continue to fight against COVID-19. That is why I implore all honourable members to join me in swiftly passing Bill C-14 to enable the government to move forward with implementing these important measures from the fall economic statement to protect the health and safety of Canadians, to support students and recent graduates, and to help families with young children in need. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker.